Breaking news, Land Rover just released video of the brand new 2020 Land Rover Defender prototype. From this video, we learned two pretty important things. The first is that Land Rover says that this Defender will be on sale in 2020. But the other thing we can see from this video is that it looks like this prototype has independent rear suspension. Land Rover says, the Next generation Defender will debut in 2019 and go on sale in 2020. We've reached an important milestone with the development of the next generation Defender. Just a couple of weeks ago, the first prototype vehicles landed in the US and they'll start showing up all over the country to do rigorous testing because we're going to make sure that the next generation Defender is the most capable, durable yet. In this video, we're going to find out the answer to one important question. Is Land Rover going to get this new Defender right? So to find out, we decided to take a look at where Land Rover has come from, where they are today, and where they could be going in the near future. And in this video, we're going to talk about all this to see what we can find out about this new upcoming Land Rover Defender. Yeah, let's start with the history, starting in 1948. Right, back in the late 40s, of course, the Land Rover famously was designed on a beach, that's where the first sketch was made, and then prototypes were built off of a Willys Jeep chassis, using a Rover engine, etc. It was then adopted by the British military, and used by a lot of people as an expedition vehicle, right? Yep. Uh, it was designed in a lot of ways, though, for farm or industrial use by civilians. Of course, it had a steel frame, an aluminum body, very interesting design, right? Yep. Then the 1950s happened, and it gained popularity with celebrities and major political figures. Marilyn Monroe, Winston Churchill, and what have you. But it also became a vehicle that was sort of the quintessential British off-road truck. Yeah, it was an adventure vehicle, right? Yep. Of course, as it progressed through the years, we started to see some different models coming along, some upgrades, some further development of the Land Rover Series vehicles, right? 58 brought the Land Rover Series 2, it had a longer wheelbase, more powerful engines, etc. In 61, we get the Series 2A, which had one big change that was pretty distinctive yep. for the Land Rover, right? They moved the headlights from next to the grill to out on the fenders, which is, of course, the classic look of the Land Rover Defender. In 1970, though, Nathan, what happened? The Range Rover came out. Now, the Classic didn't come to the United States until a little bit later. It took a while, but when the Range Rover came out, it basically had the underpinnings of the Land Rover Series 2A, but it had a luxurious interior and was meant to be both an off-road vehicle and a luxury vehicle that you could drive every day. And the reason why this is important is because it starts to signal when Land Rover started to split and build luxury vehicles and off-road vehicles. Right, and then of course in 1971 we get the Land Rover Series 3, which was the most produced series model. They built over 440,000 through 1985. And then we get the Stage 1, which had a 3.5 liter Rover V8 uh, that was basically the precursor to the 90 and 110 series, which would eventually turn into the Defender as we know it today. So where are we now? Well, we're getting more modern, right, Nathan? Yep. Yep, 1983, the Land Rover 90 and the 110 debut with a permanent four-wheel drive from the Range Rover, two-speed transfer case, locking center diff, hallmarks of the modern Defender. Right, exactly. In the early 80s, that's when we start to see the modern Defender show up in its, well, the form that we know it as right now, right? 1990 was the year in which Land Rover started officially calling it the Defender, and that would start a 26-year production run that would end up in 2016. Here in the United States, we didn't have quite the same stretch of time with the Defender, right? They only sold it here for four model years. Uh, in 1993, they only sold the 110 and they made 500 units of it. Then in 94, 95, and 97, they sold the Defender 90, uh, but in very limited quantities. And that's part of the reason why they're so expensive to buy these days. Yeah, it's funny, after they went away, and the reason they went away is because airbags became mandatory. and. They didn't want to do that, so they disappeared. Ironically, shortly thereafter, those vehicles became sought after. Mm, indeed they did, because, as we know, Nathan, things that are rare are more desirable. That tends to be the case. Of course, leading up to the 2000s, Land Rover started to change hands a few times, right? 
Uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, British Aerospace owned Land Rover. Then they were sold to BMW, who owned them from 1994 up through 2000. Then Ford took over from 2000 through 2008. And then the most recent change of hands was when Ford sold the Land Rover brand to Tata Motors, an Indian company who's owned the brand since 2008 up through the present. And yeah. this is really when a lot of big changes started to happen for the Land Rover and Range Rover brand. I mean, Tata was basically able to write Land Rover a check and say, here, go make some money, right? And to do that, well, they built a couple new models in the Range Rover line. They expanded it to include the Evoque back in 2011, which was certainly a very urban uh, city type vehicle. And more recently, the Range Rover Velar, which came out in 2017. Again, very stylized, very much built for an urban city environment. Uh, they're more luxurious. We got the new, more luxurious Discovery uh, and the Discovery Sport in 2017. And there's a lot of part sharing now going on between Land Rover and Jaguar. And obviously, Jaguar makes mostly SUVs and sedans and one sporty coupe. One sporty coupe. Now, things change in 2016. Land Rover kills the old Defender. That means no more straight axles. That means no more old school off-road SUV. Right, of course, the last Defender rolled off the production line January 29th, 2016, almost, what, three years ago? Yeah. And thus ending, basically, the 67-year production run from the original Series 1 Land Rover all the way up through the late 2010s Land Rover Defender. Uh, so this is a good look at how the Land Rover brand has evolved over time, right? It came from a very agricultural, functional, expeditioning background and then eventually started to shift a little bit more towards an urban sort of city feeling, right? That's correct. Now here in the United States, the Land Rover Defender competed directly against the Jeep Wrangler. Mm -hmm. That was back in the day. Things have changed very much with Jeep and we're curious to what the new Land Rover Defender is going to be like. Will they get it right? Yeah, so there's a few things that we well think that we know or can guess at about the new Defender, right? And we've seen some prototypes already, Nathan. Yes, we have. And the one curious thing about those prototypes that we've seen so far, they've had independent rear suspension. True, and on top of that, it's been years since Land Rover slash Range Rover have built any vehicle that has had a solid rear axle, much less a solid front axle. Right, the Defender, before it went away, was basically the only vehicle that they did that offered that. That's correct. Well, frankly speaking, it doesn't look like the DC-100 concept from 2011. It's a different shape. Yeah, that DC-100 concept is an interesting thing, right? I mean, they came out with this concept at the Frankfurt Motor Show in yep. 2011, and they showed it off to the public, and DC is Defender Concept 100. That's, that's what exactly it, what it That's means. what it stood for. So it was very clear that Land Rover was saying, here, this might be what the next Defender is going to look like. And that prototype, or that concept, concept was met with some mixed response, right? Yep. I think people understood that it was definitely going, again, more towards that stylized, city-focused feeling that the original Defender most certainly did not have. Right. Um, so that one brought up some different questions. We're, we're past the DC-100, Land Rover has moved past that. Uh, but some other questions we have, right, what about powertrains? Of course, there's a huge line of Jaguar Land Rover powertrains that are available. There's the Ingenium engine family. Those are two-liter turbo gas and diesel engines, right? What else yep. is there? There's a three-liter V6 supercharged and also a three-liter V6 turbo diesel, which is currently available in the United States, as is a five-liter V8. Now, the rumor mill, and frankly speaking, many magazines and other people agree that Jag Jaguar Land Rover is working on a new straight inline six-cylinder engine. So could that be a possibility? Eh, we don't know. That's, exactly. a, that's a really good question. So there's a lot of different options that they have for powertrains. Certainly though, whatever they put in it will be a lot less agricultural than the engines that were in the old Defender. The new Land Rovers currently and Range Rovers pack a lot of tech. They have some of the most advanced off-road systems that are available today in a car that you can buy from the factory. Uh, Terrain Response 2, a system that we've played with many times before, is absolutely amazing when it comes to the amount of tech they put into putting traction on the ground for the vehicle. And then of course, touchscreen infotainment systems. And will these things make it into this new Defender? That's the question. So there are a couple answers out there that we're looking for, one of which is, 
hey, is it going to be as off-road capable as, say, I don't know, a Jeep Wrangler? Now, I suspect that they want it to be off-road capable because that's part of their creed. They are known as the best 4x4 by far. 2018 is a really important birthday for Land Rover. It marks 70 years since the vehicles were first debuted at the Amsterdam Motor Show in 1948. The Land Rover Series vehicles, later known as Defender, have really represented the heart and soul of Land Rover. So they're trying to kind of say to us, hey, we're gonna make this seriously capable off-road. So that's a question. Are they gonna have the Terrain Response 2? Or are they gonna have a new Terrain Response 3 that does something else? Or is it an all-new system?